man on YouTube, I'm the Tough Man, and welcome back to some more Heavens of Sorcery. It is part number 16, <laughs> possibly. I think it's part 16 today, and uh, we're back after doing some work. Now, you can see a little bit of change in the background, but most of it you'll probably see on the map. And as soon as I come out of F5 mode, just a bit of uh, scale for you guys. That may actually come down a little bit. It may be dropped down just a tad, uh, but this is what I want on all four sides. So that's going to be the same on that side and the, on the back side and on that side and all sorts of stuff. Uh, we're going to have entrances like this. Uh, the predominant thing is going to be glass, um, along with these pillars sort of in the corners. And by that, I mean, um, when we get to areas like this, for instance, we're going to slip a, a, another thing in right here, and that's where another column is going to be. Uh, and then behind it, I don't know how we're going to work out what, 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 what is what yet, but I think that's a little bit too high for my liking. So I think I'm going to drop that down just a tad. I've done a little bit of work. As you can see over here, I finally sorted out the um, the embers stuff here. We've got all the burning down of all the different bits and bobs in here, which is great. Uh, that's burning away. It's all on at the moment, so this must be full. If we take a look, yeah, that is full. Uh, the copper cell there. Now, I finally figured out, if you see on Twitter, how to actually use this thing. So, uh, the it goes out of here. And then comes into these uh, little depressed parts. And then these uh, these bigger parts on the side is where it goes out of. So we've literally... I was very close to making it work last time. I think I literally had to do a, a redstone signal on there. And then I would have been absolutely fine. So that pumps a uh, an ember um, line, shall we say, into here. And then uh, I've got that one hooked up to this side. So uh, it outputs from these big ones. And obviously it inputs into there. Outputs from a big one. Inputs into there. At the same time. It looks quite cool. Uh, these are obviously all full now, but both of these are melters. I did a second melter so I can do bronze pretty easily. And they've all got these switches, obviously, we can turn on and off if we need to. Over here, then, it all goes into the mixer centrifuge much more uh, neater than it did last time. And then it comes out to the stamper right at the end there. And obviously, we've got our, our stamps there ready and waiting for us. So I've, I've cleaned it up, and it looks a damn sight lot better. Also... Done a little bit of work over here on the Britannia side of things. We've got a nice little house over there. You're going to love it, guys. It's great. Every single flower has been planted over here, uh, just in case we ever need any more of the pestles going forwards, because, of course, we may utilize some more of these pestle blocks, and uh, having something like this set up is just uh, a damn sight lot easier. Over here, we've got a nice little altar, actually, for our runic altar. Uh, it looks great. I, I I don't mind the look of this at all. I think it needs some sort of roof and then a dangly sort of like chandelier thing or something in the middle uh, just to be able to finish that off. But other than that, I quite like it. I don't think I like the dirt, though. I think this will definitely change going forwards. Over here, we do have our setup. And look at this. This little house is awesome, guys. I've hidden the entire thing uh, behind what looks like a chicken coop. I'm not going to lie, it does look a bit like a chicken coop. I've also utilised um, the architecture craft, the, um, what do you call it? It's in, um, where is it? It's not in there. Where the heck is it? It's not in there either. It's not in there. Where, where is it? Uh, oh, I think it's in here, actually. Builder's best buds. Uh, and then the architectural uh, saw bench, that one. Uh, pretty easy, just a little bit of iron. And that large pulley, I was expecting rubber and all sorts. But no, it's just literally sticks and a piece of plank, I think. Uh, so that was nice and easy. Uh, and that's how you get all of these. You just put the block in and you select whichever block that you want out. And of course, we've got our four ender flames um, doing their job over here and all of this. I've got 37 charcoal in there just nicely. Uh, filling up this mana pool over here. I've also made one of the sticky pistons so that we can go ahead and do this Just in case when we do and don't want the alchemy catalyst underneath So that's the progress that we've done on building up the base and don't forget this entire thing is going to be encased um, In fact, that's probably not a bad height because if you think about the the width of this thing uh, then having like a, a, a glass sort of dome donut shape all the way around here um, that's probably not a bad height to have, but we'll see how it goes. My building skills are, are not the best. Going through a couple of the comments then from the last episode, which was episode number 14 that went out uh, just yesterday. 
and uh, you guys have been making some comments. Please do keep your comments and suggestions coming because I do read them all. Um, Finn S says, I found tons of redstone and lapis and other bits and bobs in the dimensional doors dimension. It's worth checking out. Now, that's a good point. Um, we will go to the dimensional doors uh, thing at some point, but I know it's incredibly dangerous and it's you can get lost really, really easily in uh, dimensional doors. Whether or not um, the, the fact that we use these sort of teleportation things... Uh, around the place then that might be that might make things a little bit easier for us so that if we get lost we could just teleport out uh, but i wouldn't like to test that <laughs> not at this moment in time uh, jason duel was saying about uh, i don't know if it's been disabled but britannia has the orchid doesn't it that's a good point whether or not it's been disabled i don't think it would have been um it's not yeah it's, it hasn't been um but the recipe greed pride it is difficult to be able to get pixie dust as well for example we need the elven trades to be able to do that um it would be incredibly difficult to be able to get early on um and by that point i would think that we've probably come across something that will give us lead uh, a little bit quicker i have put it in i've I made a, an account for uh, github um and i did make the uh, the suggestion there so whether or not that suggestion will be taken on board i think that's personally speaking if we if you were to buff that up to dropping two acre petals per kill uh, then it doesn't take away the fact that if you went ahead and used looting for instance you would end up with a lot more um and that would be beneficial to you to have looting on but if you didn't have looting it's still sufficiently grindy enough i think to warrant uh, just two acre petals per thick because if you think about it, um, two uh, one acre petal equals like three lead nuggets, and that's just that's a lot of time. Uh, RTF uh, RT free, I think that's how you pronounce it. Eighty seven also said about lead being a big problem for them until they got looting five through astral sorcery, uh, the horologium horo infused glass. If you level favored soul. Uh, from the Angel of Vengeance to 1415, you get a leap spell that makes exploration and finding acre petals pretty easy. Uh, cast a spell while Elytra Glide and you can fly extremely fast. That'd be interesting. So, yeah, looting five from Astral Sorcery. This holo horologium infused glass. What on earth is that? Let's have a quick look. So, infused glass. This thing. Infused glass. I see. So, doing something with this, apparently helps <laughs> and then i think that you can um ah, i literally don't know I, I would have to look through the astral tome and how that actually works there but thank you very much for the suggestion Sabbath Knight, who was a regular commenter as well, was saying about increasing the starlight storage using ember liquid tanks, which I have done in a previous episode, uh, but using liquid extractors uh, to attach to the light wells. Now, I tried to do that, but they didn't seem to want to connect. Whether or not it's a visual thing, uh, and I just never gave it a chance, please do let me know. Um, it might be something to give a quick try of, uh, actually, to make sure that that's... Uh, um, that's something that is actually possible. It's just visually it doesn't connect. Ningo also said that if I hold the constellation paper in the offhand, I don't need to keep swapping it when I'm using the attunement altar. And this is a, this is a, this is me being an old school Minecrafter. This, but this box never used to be here. I never used to have an offhand, and I never place anything in my offhand because of that. I'm also one of these Minecrafters who use control as a, a sprint rather than double tapping, uh, sorry, who double tap W sometimes, rather than using the control to sprint. It took a long time to be able to get used to the fact I didn't need to double uh, double tap uh, W. So yeah, it just takes a while for me to sort of catch up with these things. And a couple of the last commenters here, uh, Glitch Reaper saying, if you hang out around the white whirlwinds in the aether, you get items tossed out to you. Black whirlwinds will toss out mobs, so we really want to be careful with that one. And Joshua Blazer says, you can get more starlight from rock crystals than you do aquamarines. I think that's uh, in relation to putting them into the starlight wells so that we can get more that way. The thing is that rock crystals are, are so much harder to get than aquamarine. I can, I can find aquamarine, I can make aquamarine pretty easily. Uh, so using aquamarine is, is much uh, more cost efficient rather than trying to get these rock crystals because that's absolutely ridiculous how long that takes to get these rock crystals. So yeah, with that in mind then guys, that's all the comments at the moment from the uh, from the last episode. If there is something else that comes up uh, from between now and the next episode, I will go ahead and mention that. But I think it's time to get on with today's episode. The first thing I want to try then is definitely the starlight altar thing. And I want to try these fluid extractors and see if that actually, uh, see if that actually works for us. So I'm going to take uh, some of these. I'm going to need some fluid pipes as well. Now let's go over to the uh, starlight infuser. 
and see if this actually physically works. Now, of course, uh, the visuals show that it doesn't work. Whether or not it does, we will soon find out. Right, we've got some uh, we've got some starlight in these two. So if we go ahead and fluid extractor on these, um, and then we sort of add it to that. Let's get rid of that. And then there we go. So these, um, I wondered what that was then. I was like, why can't I jump? So these do work on uh, redstone signals. Now they're not going anywhere. Do they have to be on the top? That's another one. Whoops. Slide that back a second. Do these have to be on the top? Let's give this a try. Nope. Uh, maybe the bottom side? It could be, actually. It could be the fact of uh, using the bottom side. It could be something very, very simple. Ah, there we go. Brilliant. Okay, that actually works, guys. So we can actually do this. So uh, what I want to do is uh, get a little bit of space over here for this. And uh, it is indeed the bottom side that uh, that works. So that's... Oh, man. That's going to change the way this... Oh. Hold on a minute. Let me uh, get all this up. And I think uh, we have our trusty Tinker's Hammer there so we can sort of not get that attached to that point right there. And there we go. It's all attached. Now, I do believe we still need those in there. Like that. Is that going down there? Because it looks like it's trying to put it into there. Oh, these are the old bloody Thorncraft mechanics, aren't they? <laughs> can I just turn that off? Nope. How do I tell it to, like, put it into there, please? Please. Be real nice, if you could. Oh, man. I'm going to have to get rid of that, aren't I? So, i got to turn that off. I was hoping that I could just leave them all on. So, I'll turn that one on. It's not going to go up there. Is it emptying? It is. It must have emptied, guys, there. So, um... That one works. So it seems as if I've got to fill these up and manually toggle these. So I think, do they, um, they may react to comparators. Now, if we put a comparator on the side there and uh, have it do some sort of like trickery with redstone and what have you, so that when, it, when it's full, it gets a redstone signal to whichever um, extractor is needed at the time. It may be worth doing something like that. Maybe it's just like it doesn't work like this. Uh, that would be a, a big shame. I don't know why it's trying to put it into the extractor, though. That's very, very strange. Uh, but we'll leave it as is, and it is currently working like this, so we'll just leave it as it is. I swear to God, it rains 24-7 now, and I do not understand why. We get, end up with so much rain, it's ridiculous. All right. Just put some of this stuff away. Now, I tried in the last episode, um, and I've been collecting latex over in the Misty World for the rubber thing. Uh, the problem with uh, with us at the moment is sulfur. Um, and I've realised why I'm not getting any sulfur when I'm mining, and that's because I'm mining at the wrong place. To get sulfur ore, uh, you've got to do round about level 30. Why level 30, I think, is the 0.17 chance of getting it, which is pretty good. Uh, so, yeah, round about level 30, we've got to get our me creeps down there to be able to get this sulfur. So, we've got the latex now. I've got tons and tons of latex uh, that took an absolute lifetime. And I'll tell you why it took a lifetime, guys. If we go over to the uh, Misty World, over to my latex part, you will see that something happened to the tree. And I really don't understand... Wait, where's... Where is the tree? What the heck? It seems to have just disappeared. Now, there was definitely a tree here, but at the end, guys, I ended up with just a stump. That, there was one block of, uh, of wood at the bottom there, um, but it seems it's just disappeared. Hey, up. We've got a bogey on our six, guys. Right, you're not hard enough, so stop it. I feel like I'm in some sort of standoff with that, uh, with that hat on that he's got. Now, I tried doing things a different way. Um, I tried getting my own rubber tree sapling. Do they drop? No. <laughs> they do not drop at all, it seems, from uh, from rubber trees. I have chopped down quite a few of these things and got not one single uh, sapling from it. Not one single sapling. Um, I then 
like I said, just collected passively whilst I was doing all of the uh, the island there. I just collectively, uh, I just collected the latex over and over again as I was going through, and then something happened to my tree. Uh, it's very strange, but it is what it is. But yeah, I've just been getting rubber tree wood sticks and these branches. I've been getting no sapling whatsoever. And if you have a look at uh, the rubber tree saplings, there is no recipe for that either. So I just don't understand why it's not dropping it. Because what I wanted to do was, of course, just bring some over to my main island there and start making some over at my main island. I also tried putting down just the wood. So just putting down the wood and then trying the latex on there. But it's too smart. It's too smart and it knew. It knew what I was trying to do there. And it was like, nah, bruv, you can't do that. So, um, alas, was not easy to get that latex. But we got it anyways. The problem next is the sulfur, but I'll get that uh, soon. Oh, I've turned the weather down and that is actually so much nicer. So much nicer. Okay. So we can't do the PPE power up yet because that requires a ridiculous amount of rubber. Uh, which of course then will require the sulphur. We've got the latex to be able to finish it all. We just don't have the, uh, the sulphur to get the rubber. And that's fine. That's not a problem. The next on the list, we're doing all this sort of stuff here. Into the woods and terrestrial. So I, look, I had a quick look at these to see what was coming up basically. But uh, let's have a look at terrestrial. <coughs> Gold leaf, along with uh, Charoit gems, which we don't have any Charoit gems yet, I don't think, from the Everbright and Everdawn, with the final missing ingredients to be able to construct a terrestrial agglomeration plate. In its default configuration, this, di uh, this device allows the creation of the most powerful manner attuned material, that's Terra Steel. And we get some of this stuff, this mundane metallion. Now, this is one of the things that I thought to myself, hang on a minute, I can, uh, I can fix my lead issue with this stuff. Um, and you can sort of change one of these into three. Um, you can change one lead into three lead with uh, with this sort of stuff, but it does require other bits and bobs as well. So to be able to finish this quest, we need a terrestrial agglomeration plate and one piece of terrestrial uh, ingot. Ah, look at this, guys. We've got a problem here, um, and that is the amount of lapis that is going to be needed uh, for this. So um, it's basically five in that and there's one underneath there you can't see it but there is one underneath there and uh, it's four lapis blocks now do we have <clears throat> enough uh i don't think we do because we need yeah we've not got enough prismarine crystals that's not a problem because there's loads of that stuff in the aether so we can go ahead and get some of that so that shouldn't be too hard to actually craft this thing the uh, terrestrial agglomeration plate itself on the top, we need some of these Charoit gems. Uh, and we don't have one of them yet. And we need loads of these uh, these mana, um, these uh, runes here as well. We need also a couple more of them gold leaves. And uh, it was very difficult to get that. I think we got some as a reward. Yes, we did. Okay, so that's nice. And then, of course, a block, a full block of mana steel to be able to make this terrestrial agglomeration plate and change this up. And once that's done, you can make terrestrial ingots, terra steel ingots, uh, with mana pearls, mana steel ingots, and a mana diamond and really that's not too hard maybe we might need to get some more of the uh, charcoal up and running with the diamond there uh, but that's not too hard we should be able to get this no problem here we are in the ever bright mine because it's actually slightly better uh, it's slightly easier to find the Sharot gems in the ever bright than it is the ever dawn so we've got one me creep going that way i'm going to do the same uh, going this way so one two three four five six seven blocks in every single dimension uh, di yeah in every single direction there we go let him do that diopside or don't know what that is probably give me some sort of gem there we go a diopside gemstone now we've got to be careful because that will happen <laughs> I was literally just about to say about the fact that we've not lit any of these up and uh, we don't have enough torches to be able to, look, uh, to um, do this either. So we've got some turquoise art, which is nice. We've got some more moonstone, which is lovely, but it's not what we're after. Uh, so we've got to be really, really careful at the moment. I didn't know lava was a thing in this either. Me creeps, watch out, my friends. Because you're probably going to die from this. If you're not careful. There we go. Hopefully it's not going to... Uh, we might lose some items from doing something like that as well. So we've got to be really, really careful here, guys. Because we're going to have stuff spawn. In fact, let me go grab myself. If we can just find some of this ore, it'd be nice. Oh, no, the Mekri! Oh! You're not very you, you're not very bright, really, are you, Mekri? You're not really bright. It's literally mining away 
the lava. That's interesting. Uh, however, it's, uh, yeah. Pyro up. We're getting everything but what we need. Ah, a bit of charoy ore. I found a tiny little bit of it there. And we need, um, I don't know, was it three or four of these? I'm going to keep going, though, and get, uh, mine some more of this stuff. I'm just going to make sure that I keep killing these things. I'm going to go back, though, and grab myself uh, some torches, I think. And Oh, my lord, what did he just do? Oh, my god. What is this guy? <laughs> Are we safe? Right, we're in a safe place now. He's not see. He's, he can't see us. He can't see us. We can go back. Uh, we can get some torches and try to kill this. Oh, man, he's split into three. Right, we've got plenty more torches. We might be jumping straight into a fight. Here we are. Gotta be real careful. Look at it. I do have ranged as well. It's that one, I think. Oh, my God! Where does he? Which one is it? He doesn't seem to want to kill. Die, even. Yes, I killed him. Okay, my goodness. Let's get some uh, some torches down rather sharpish. Let's get the old F7 up. Oh, that was insane. I've never seen something like that. I mean, he was actually some form of intelligent fight right there. That's crazy. Did you guys just see that there? I mean, hopefully I've caught that on camera, but there was a rat that's, that literally whoosh, like that. I, there's no way I could tame that guy. He literally disappeared before I had a chance. All right, so having a look at this, I've got five Charoi ores uh, in here, and I haven't seen any more in the walls or the, or the roofs or anything like that. So um, I think we're done here for the moment. We've got enough Charoi to be able to... Uh, can we double this somehow? Don't think so. But to make the agglomeration play, let's have a quick gander. Uh, it was three. Three charoit gems. Okay, so that's not too hard. We just need to, I think it was just to smelt that down. Yeah, just smelt that down and we get one charoit gem from that one. We will definitely want some more. So I've lit this place up. And of course, we've got it as a waypoint. So we can come back for this at any point. But I think it's time to uh, go over to the Aether, get some more of the Prismarine Shards that we're going to need for this particular build with the Lapis Blocks. And I think uh, we might have some runes to be able to make here, but we've got all the uh, the manner in the world at the moment over at that place. Now that we've set a proper area up for our Britannia. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys about the chicken farm. <laughs> I made a chicken farm. Oh, no, I told you in the last episode. I remember now. Okay, so we've got plenty of uh, feathers now to be able to go ahead and, uh, well, we're getting a rune of air at the moment, which requires one of these feathers. Skyroot leaves and all that sort of jazz. So let me get that together. And uh, I'll be back when I've got everything together to get the terrestrial agglomeration plate gone. We should have everything on hand to be able to make this for us now. Brilliant. Everything is there. And uh, we have enough starlight to be able to craft this as well, which is pretty cool. So all of this is, it, I don't think we'll get the runes back, which is a shame because they take ages to craft to these runes. And uh, we've got the lapis blocks we need and we've got the living rock, of course. Once we've got this, we have our little, uh, our little topper for this little thing that we're going to do. We are going to do it over in the Britannia area. I'm going to just do, I'm just going to put it down. We're not going to do anything, you know, overly complicated over there as a design or anything like that. I'll probably do stuff like that in between episodes. That's what I like to do. So we're going to pop over to home and I cannot wait to get that spell with the fairy wings uh, once we get to the underworld that will allow us to just teleport because I don't want to just create a waypoint over there and teleport over there. I mean, that's just... That is the def very definition of, uh, of cheating there. I would like to create something that will make my life a little bit easier when it comes to that. So, with that in mind then, the uh, Terra Steel goes, uh, the, sorry, the Living Rock goes as follows. The Lapis goes as follows. And then the Terra Steel agglomeration plate goes as follows. So that is now working. Uh, to get Terra Steel though, which is the green one, uh, we need a Mana Diamond, a Mana Steel Ingot, and a Mana Pearl. These two, easy enough. Mana Diamond, I'm going to need to do a little bit of chopping down of trees, I think. Uh, because I literally ran out of mana as I was doing the um, 
uh, doing the prismarine shards into uh, I I into lapis. Uh, also, I literally just shoved them. I, I I shoved them all in there, all thirty odd pieces that I had, uh, and then stood back and watched as they fell back into the pool and started to create prismarine shards that I was fuming. So I had to go back to the earth and get some more and come back. That was uh, yeah, that was uh, an experience, but still. So what we're going to do is we will change this so that it's pointing at this because it will require mana and quite a lot of it as well. Otherwise, it's going to take it's going to take a, a long time. We're going to need a lot of uh, a lot of charcoal being put through. We need a lot of mana um, to one side. But the main thing is we do need a diamond, and I don't know if we've got one spare. If we have, brilliant. If not, then uh, it's too bad. Um, we don't have one spare. Okay, so we need a mana steel uh, ingot there, and I think did we have a mana pearl? Yes, we do. Okay, brilliant, actually. That's not too bad. So I just need some charcoal to be able to turn into some diamond uh, pieces so that we can get diamonds easy enough. Um, you guys have been saying as well, the diamonds, you can actually get diamonds pretty easily in the dungeons uh, from the stonelings. The stonelings will actually give you diamonds, obviously, if you can manage to uh, kill them in time. Uh, they will give you diamonds. So that's uh, that's another thing. Oh, it will also, in Ratlantis, you can get diamond ore. That's pretty awesome. Okay. Well, I've got to chop down some trees again, guys. Whilst I'm waiting, I may as well try to get rid of some of the tent that I've got all over myself as well. Uh, get in the, uh, in the water with a bit of soap. There we go. Let's uh, clean all that stuff off. Brilliant stuff. Nice. Might need to take some more soap at some point. And then, of course, these stone tree berries, which... Uh, didn't they try to kill me last time I ate these? Oh, they're not doing anything. Or maybe they just do the detox. Oh, maybe we do need. No, that should be. Oh, it's because I can't eat at the moment. That's why. I remember now. We'll have to come back and eat them. Uh, ten diamond nuggets later. We have our diamond. We should be able. Um, oh, I can never seem to put anything in here. Uh, my precious chest is getting too full. Uh, that's a that's a good problem, I suppose. That is a good problem. Um, oh, actually, before I disappear over there, I am going to get what remainder of the uh, the charcoal that is getting cooked up. I'm going to grab all of that sort of stuff and, uh, and start putting it through to get some more mana from this because it is going to require quite a bit of mana. Is the uh, is the thing? So we should have that. Yeah, it's in our box. It's in our box of tricks. We're okay. So I'm going to shove that. I'm going to get some diamond, mana diamond out of this. I think we just need a normal one for this, so I'm not going to jinx it. There we go, mana diamond. Uh, do we right-click this? Oh, we can right-click this. You couldn't right-click this back in the day. It was an absolute pain, I can tell you that. So let me grab ourselves the um, Wand of the Forest right there. And I'm going to bind you to that. Is it going to work now? Oh, look. It's just catching the edge of that block there. I think we need to move it so that it's on the top of this thing. Whoops. <laughs> I'm literally putting it back in. There we go. Okay, now it's working. Now it's working. You can see the little particle effects just around the edge there. That is going to take an absolute year and a half. So, I need to get rid of that for a start. And then I need to put some more of the charcoal in there so we can get some mana moving back into this thing. Because it's going to suck quite a bit of mana uh, into doing this. And as I said, it's going to take an absolute age, guys. So I will be back when this thing has finished. Actually, guys, looking at this, and I'm not going to change it now, but I will change it in the future. Because um, the, basically how the mana spreaders work is it will not let another mana burst go until the other one has reached its destination so probably having this setup right next to the mana spreader would have been a hell of a lot better uh, than what it currently is you can see the little blue balls slowly getting closer together eventually they'll turn green and eventually hopefully these things don't despawn that would be absolutely horrendous i think uh, when the mod first came out they did uh, but I don't think they do anymore. If they do, then I have no qualms about cheating myself when I'm back in because um, I think that's been cheat. I think that's been changed since. At least I hope it has. Well, guys, it happened. They literally despawned. <laughs> oh, come on. Let's try this again, then, shall we? All three of them in, and it's slightly closer now, so it should do things a hell of a lot quicker. I'm hoping. <laughs> 
Now we'll, we'll tell whether these balls move quicker or not. Now the only problem is, obviously, these mana spreaders. We could put multiple mana spreaders going to this thing. But uh, we probably want a better mana spreader. Or, or the lenses, even. That's not a bad idea, actually. Because there's some lenses in my, in the uh, in Britannia that will allow you to sort of uh, have a... Where, where is it? Magnetizing Phantom. Influence weight. Um, sort of like has a bigger... A bigger sort of a, a bigger thing velocity that means it's going to be faster and potency actually both of these together um, and that wouldn't be too hard to do actually so there'll be rune of fire and a mana lens and that will give the potency which means it's got more mana in it per burst and I think you can stick them together if memory serves me correctly uh, you can stick them together with a slime ball and end up with a velocity and a potency one uh, which will obviously make more quicker go so if this doesn't work then uh, we shall try that, I think. I think the inevitable has happened. It has indeed. We've run out of mana. Now, that's obviously going to stop the progress of all this sort of stuff. So, oh, that is such a shame. I don't think it's going to be possible without that velocity um, uh, and stuff. We'll let that, actually, we'll, we'll take this down. We will let that mana with all of those things build up. And we will start making ourselves one of the velocity potency um, uh, lenses there. And uh, that will hopefully make things a little bit better for us when it comes to, you know, we'll let the mana build up first and we'll, we'll make these lenses. What about that setup, actually? We, I was getting quite a big backlog of mana, as you can see in the mana spreader, uh, more than what's getting uh, pulled out. So I've got two mana spreaders there and it's really easy to craft some more, so that's not an issue. Uh, and that will mean we're getting twice the mana, twice as quickly, obviously. But it does mean we're getting the same amount of mana, actually. Not twice the amount of mana, but it means it's getting to its its location twice as quick. Uh, which is fine by me, especially when I need all of these uh, being changed into mana steel ingots. So it's really easy to craft mana lenses. We just need a glass pane with uh, surrounded by mana steel ingots. And then, of course, the velocity one requires air, and the potency one requires fire. So that's actually not too hard either. We're going to need to create some more of these, though. Uh, these mana spreaders and I think um, possibly uh, maybe even two mana spreaders if we if we put this up now we can't really put that up in the air actually That's a good point. Um, yeah I think one, one will be fine one will be fine a right, mana lens with a rune of fire will give us the potency and a mana lens with the rune of air will give us the velocity now if we combine these both with a slime ball with a gateway potency velocity and that's exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and set this all up and uh, see what mana we've got. Uh, hopefully we can go ahead and craft that Terra Steel ingot eventually. What the heck is going on over here? Okay, so I've had to take this down. This guy looks like it's depressed. Like it, it's 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 not correct though. It's not. That like that's up, right? Okay. Uh there's one. Once it goes, it's literally no, not returning. I haven't changed a single thing. It's not returning back to normal. I don't understand why. <laughs> oh, guys. Why is the thing just never simple? Okay. A relog seems to have fixed it. <laughs> I literally don't know what that was. Maybe it's because it's it's running, but I'm not in the area. Because I, 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 I was... Um, I had to go to the Ever Bright or the Ever Dawn. It's one of the two. I had to go out there and kill a few things to be able to try and get another uh, slime ball. So um, maybe being over there caused some form of issue. I don't know. But anyway, it's sorted now. And uh, we've got all the stuff. I do need another one of those, though, the mana spreaders. All right, so I remember this now. <laughs> Britannia um, has this little thing here which shows you how much mana it is needed uh, to be able to make this thing. Well, that's a lot of goddamn mana. If we have a look, guys, it's nowhere near. It's going to take half a pool. Half of a pool to actually fill up. It is nowhere near being able to craft this thing. But what I'm going to do, I am going to go ahead and put the potency lens and the velocity lens on there anyway, ready and waiting. We'll let this run in the background because I think we're going to need a lot more charcoal as well. Um, but we'll let this run in the background and we'll come back to this. We do have another thing available and ready for us to do, and that is into the woods. With gold leaf in hand, you can prepare a site for rituals which focus the latent power of the trees from ever bright and ever dawn. For this, you'll need 8 wood stands and 16 gold powder placed in rings surrounding a sapling. 
And uh, this is basically, it's going to show you what this is. So to make a wooden stand, we need a ritual table with gold leaf starlit wood uh, from obviously the, the ever bright, maybe, ever dawn, probably. Um, and Sapphire makes us one of these wooden stands. And it said we need it eight, was it? Eight wood stands, yeah. So eight wood stands. We also grind down gold leaf to be able to get the gold powder. And it wants 16 gold powder to be able to do that. So we should have enough gold leaf to be able to do this uh, fully. And this is how you set it up. So you get a sapling in the middle, surrounded by that gold uh, gold powder and all of those. And it says, it's not required to have all wooden stands at present. The gold powder will be consumed when crafted. So I'm presuming um, that all of these uh, wood stands have items on them to be able to get these tokens. So a sapling in the middle, along with all that, that gold stuff around it, and then these items on the pedestals uh, around this, and you get token of fear, token of anger, all this sort of stuff, and different... This is how you do rituals, basically. So that's going to be interesting to see. So I think we can go ahead and start setting this up. Um, I think we do need, however, some starlit wood. So let's pop and get some of that. I think it, more than likely it's going to be in the ever bright... Everdon, possibly Everdon. Let's have a gander if it is in the Everdon. Uh, maybe not actually. It might be the Starlit. Where did we get Starlit wood from? That's a good point. Right, I found some Starlit wood. I have been attacked quite a few times by these guys though. They're really annoying. I can never seem to get them in view. Here we go. Come on. At me, Brav. Come at me. Is that enough? Good, because I have as well. <laughs> Okay, uh, need eight of these, of course, to be able to make uh, all the different ones that we're going to need. We don't need eight, per se. It's not asked us to get eight, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway, just in case there's any sort of rituals that do require eight to be uh, to use. So I think... Is that eight? It's nine. Nice. I'm confused. Where did this guy come from? I've got a totem of undying just, like, hanging around in my uh, inventory here. I may have got that from a drop from something. I don't think I've done the quest right. I need wooden stands and gold powder for that, so I don't know. It's probably something that dropped it there. Um, I did kill something. I, I, I honestly don't know where that's come from. It's there anyway, just in case we ever need it. So I need eight of these. Um, the quest, please. I need eight gold leaf and eight sapphires. Oh, gold leaf. Eight gold leaf and uh, eight sapphires. Sapphire, sapphire, sapphire. Eight of them and then really simple bang 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 and go ahead and uh, get our things that we need i love the look of that it's really really nice and i can just do this seven times over and get our wooden stands oh i went ahead and made a load more of these uh of the gold leaf things these brilliant fibers because i thought oh nice one you know i need 16 of these and i haven't got 16 but actually one gold leaf turns into four of this gold powder oh I just spent ages doing that as well oh we've done the quest now we've got the 16 gold powder and we have the eight wooden stands we've got loads of gold powder actually as a reward and that will actually unlock a couple more quests for us uh, i'm presuming that these quests will take advantage of, uh, of what we've just created there. And we will have to go into the Everbright to be able to do this. Uh, do we need to do it in the Everbright? Actually, this is a good this is a good point. Because I really don't want to, if I can. <laughs> it will harvest it from uh, the latent power of the trees from Everbright and Everdawn. Uh, but it doesn't say that we need to do it in there. Uh, so it's not... Blah, blah, blah. We just need a sapling in the middle. What sapling? Uh, it's a blue bright sapling. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, we can get a blue bright sapling in the middle there. Along with this along with this and then we should be fine i'm hoping we could still do this in this overworld but maybe we do need to be in the everbright we'll give we'll give it a try and see but anyways um the quest the next quest on the list we've got resinous uh with these new materials it's possible to craft a device which vibrates in the frequency with your in frequency with your soul nice while this doesn't sound at all practical uh it uses the energy from this resonance to coalesce an incredibly pure type of quartz Radiant quartz. This material can be used in constru construction of many things uh, wh which will all resonate in tune with the soul of whomever placed them. Unfortunately, these resonators are not without cost. Only three can be placed at any given time, lest they do lasting harm to your very soul. So we need Radiant Resonator, which is from the Arcane Archives. 
Uh, and we need six. This is how we craft it here. We've got the Dawnstone ingots. We've got resonating gems, terrace, moss. We've got mana. Uh, any any container with uh, a thousand mana in there. And uh, this is interesting. I've never seen any of this before. Creating the resin, uh, radiant resonator using the ritual of the forest. There we go. That's one of them. Uh, it's only natural. Another important tool of natural magics is the natural altar. Unlike the ritual of the forest, it directly utilizes the local aura to imbue objects with potent natural energies. For now, let's use it to transform a redstone root into wild root uh, from obviously roots. <laughs> and we do that in a natural altar. Um, this is how we create the natural altar, should I say. With some holy stone, gold leaf. Uh, Diop stone, we've got some of that as well, and a token of joy, which we need to, uh, you know, create um, create in the, uh, the altar itself. And then we can build the natural altar. This looks pretty awesome. How to assemble the natural altar. Note, the block under the altar is empty, so it can be used for automation. Nice. That looks pretty cool, actually, guys. So, wild root, uh, a redstone root in the natural altar will give us wild root. And uh, I'm presuming... Ooh, brilliant fiber. I wonder what that's for. Infused rock, turquoise stone to infused rock. Infused horizon, horizonite. I don't think I've even found some of that yet. Um, that's how we get that. Okay, nice. Okay, I think we can go ahead and do the... Oh. Do we want to do one of these? I want to see if this actually works first. That'd be nice. I want to get the terrace deal. That's definitely what I want. <laughs> we are nowhere near. We are absolutely nowhere near getting this terror steel. We need half a mana pool before it's even possible. Guys, I don't think it's, it's we're going to be able to get that this episode. Um, because I have run out of time, guys. That is all going to be it for the end of this episode. If you've enjoyed it, please go ahead and leave a like. Next time we'll come back, we'll start on that natural altar and a couple of the other bits and bobs that we've got going in the quest book. And um, yeah, hopefully we can get the terror steel by then as well. If you've enjoyed it, please go ahead and give it a like, guys. It'd be absolutely fantastic. And don't forget, you can subscribe and follow me on Twitch as well because I do. Uh, I will be getting rid of my Twitter at any point soon. So please be aware uh, that you will not get notifications on Twitter. Please go ahead and follow me on Twitch if you want to get notified of any live streams that I'm going to do uh, upcoming. So thank you very much, guys. I've been the Tough Man. As always, stay safe.